So hi, Vice. It's been a, a long time since we last spoke with each other. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me again, Andrew. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> I'm uh, continuing my series of videos and interviews with uh, entrepreneurs who are pursuing the startups in the space industry. And as um, as explained in one of my previous videos, I'm I really consider the the true heroes of the industry, the the teams and the CEOs and entrepreneurs of the companies that are trying to sell the service and build the products and sell the services to the end customers, the non-space consumers, and not just trying to, you know, sell the PKs and jeans to the other space companies pursuing something else. So this is where I'm, I'm really, I really appreciate your, your time this morning to talk to me and yeah, just perhaps dig a little bit deeper into the nitty gritty of the application business. And yeah, I prepared a couple of questions uh, about, you know, what it takes to run an application company. Obviously you are at a pretty early stage. You are just preparing to launch your very first satellite, but I know you have been successful in fundraising and building a team in navigating the legal barriers around, you know, driving the business across multiple countries. So you've done already a lot. And again, I just wanted to take your story to other entrepreneurs and hopefully inspire them to again, builds a service that leverages space domain and builds a product for the non-space organizations because that's the way how to keep this industry sustainable. So yeah, excited to be here with you. All right, so here goes the, the a couple of tough questions I prepared for you. So the first one would be, uh, you know, when we talk with our clients and when we talk with other companies that are pursuing the, the business model of, again, just putting some sensors in space and then trying to build the business or distribute the data to other businesses. So I guess the toughest thing in their journey is that you have to, you have to wear like different hats. So not only you have to be, you know, a company that knows how to build the satellites, but then you have to build them. You have to do all the project management around like how to deliver satellite to orbit. Then you have to be B, a satellite operator, you have to operate a satellite. C, you have to uh, build, so you have to process the data. So like for data to become insightful and useful for the clients, but then you have to become an IT product company to build a service that would distribute the information that you derive out from that uh, imagery or of that whatever data you are downloading from, from your satellite. And then of course, you know, you have to distribute the data to um, sell this data around the world to the customer. So, you know, it's, it's hard to ima even imagine how would you blend so many expertise under one roof and, and, and then how to make them all successful and then build this a single business. Can you perhaps share how, how, how do you see that? What is challenging for you? If yes, how do you overcome, are you planning to overcome the challenge? Yeah, so as you rightly said, Andre, it's like an entire supply chain, each of it having its own core expertise. Uh, and uh, especially for a startup or someone new trying to get into this, doing all of it and doing all of it well is simply not possible. There's too many factors to consider. If you look at satellite manufacturing, the satellite operations, uh, and then uh, selling this data, uh, distributing the data, and then analyzing the data itself. There's a f quite a few companies. If, if you look at at least the main players in the industry, you have Digital Globe and you have Planet, who's in the Earth observation industry. If you look at them, they're mainly satellite operators. Digital Globe doesn't build their own satellites. They just operate the satellites and then uh, make sure that this data is sold to their customers. Planet Labs build their satellites, but then mainly it operates those satellites and provides this data. They haven't been able to at least till now successfully get into the latter part of the business, which is the analytics. That's where a whole lot of other companies like Descartes Labs or Orbital Insight come into play because um, the use cases for Earth observation uh, imagery is widespread from agriculture to oil and gas to urban monitoring to even defense and government related applications. There's just so many different sectors uh, and each of these sectors requires its own nuances and approach to it, which means that uh, a company limited in its resources cannot possibly uh, excel in each of these sectors, which is why that sort of has been elusive. Uh, and even if you look at these downstream sector companies like Orbital Insight or Descartes, they also focus on particular sectors. Uh, Orbital went after the financial sector and the oil and gas sector. Descartes Labs concentrates on uh, agriculture and is also now moving towards the financial sector. What we will see as uh, companies grow and their balance books become stronger is a consolidation where some of these companies will try to acquire other companies to build 
as much of a value chain in themselves but uh, for startups coming up they need to be very careful as to what sector or what part of that supply chain they need to be in uh, whether uh, their expertise lies in manufacturing the satellites uh, whether their expertise lies in operating this and distributing the data whether it lies in analysis uh, because trying to do all three at a very early stage with limited resources is a recipe for disaster uh, so what i would see the industry going towards is there would be a consolidation where companies who have strong balance books will try to bring as much under their roof as possible uh, or uh, we could also see a different approach where you know uh, certain sector specific companies like uh, you know agriculture will become the hub for everything in agriculture and satellite operators will provide data to them uh, so uh, there's this consolidation definitely coming as and when the balance books get stronger is how i see this industry evolving because trying to do all of it at the same time is simply not possible so if i understood you correctly uh the way like your advice sort of to the entrepreneurs who are thinking of starting a space startup and a space startup in general would be to uh not try to build the expertise in the entire the cross value chain but perhaps to define the gap in the markets in there either in the industry vertical that they have expertise with or in their geographical area and then just uh blending yourself in that gap and then hoping that the next wave of consolidation will bring them more alignment or like in more verticalized environments that will provide the solution for some some industry sector related agriculture or even gas mining right they need to like startups need to identify a particular niche where they can do something 10 times or 100 times better and focus on making that as core ip because once they have a foothold in there where their product or the offering is 10 at least 10 times better then they have uh, some sort of a foothold on on the basis of which they can expand where they want to trying to do everything where they're just two times better or even almost as good as the others uh, like people are usually averse to shifting to new offerings uh, so i think that that is a learning that we've had over the past year and a half uh, at pixel concentrate on what is your core expertise and double down on that mm-hmm. got it that's that's very helpful and where do you see like you you seem to be very knowledgeable about the market overall globally with you know knowledge about different companies different supply chain sectors where do you see the gap like yourself like if you, if you were another you or you, if you were not you where do you see the gap right now the gaps would be uh, in uh, two or three places uh, i think one would be in terms of you know generalized tools uh, easy to use tools and uh, software for analyzing satellite data like you have uh, uh, you know esri you have nv you have these legacy software systems that people have to take time to train themselves for and then analyze imagery in there uh, it's there's a tremendous opportunity there to like make it easier uh, for companies to be able to have something like aws sage maker where they can just have custom copy paste uh, ml models or image processing models that can take this imagery and then uh, like they can do what they want with the imagery to get to the end user uh, the other thing would be uh, uh, you know uh, the approach here mainly has been b2b where there's enterprise to enterprise sales uh, and uh, satellite data and analytics has been catered uh, like each of these enterprise have different way of sort of working about it they try to integrate that into their workflow so what you would sort of need in the industry is like a stripe model uh, what stripe did for payments is uh, instead of going directly after the end user they went after the developer community because it's the developers that work with uh, the payment systems and integrate into their existing workflow uh, it needs to be as easy for people to take satellite imagery and data uh, uh, and utilize for whatever purposes that they want no matter what sector uh, and the other is um, uh, like not just one type of data will help the customer solve their problems if you are looking at oil and gas industry only satellite imagery will not help them tackle uh, the leaks okay. uh, they would need other types of drone aerial data as well as iot sensor data uh, or okay. if you are looking at agriculture as well just uh, uh, high resolution uh, imagery or a sar imagery is not going to be enough so what you would need is uh, moving ahead there would need to be multi sensor uh, fusion uh, multi sensor data fusion Uh, where you need to have multiple different types of data working with each other to come to a uh, uh, the end goal so like the the end goal here has to be what is the output that are getting out of it and not what particular data you're using uh, and to be able to get that you need to be able to work with multiple different types of data uh, so i think that's where sort of the gaps are today uh, for uh, you know making making earth observation much more widespread than it is uh like gps is something that's being used by every person everywhere in the globe there's potential capability for earth observation as well where it moves from becoming b2b to even b2c where people can you know look up things on their phone and use this for uh, 
uh, things that they would need to do. So I think uh, there's tremendous potential for Earth observation from from here and multiple gaps to fill. Yeah, I think you tackled upon something uh, that I also gathered as an insight from my early interviews with another company in the sector. I think their the like biggest challenge is that they are trying to and um, do the enterprise sales, so like a traditional B two B sales model where we have like regional sales and then we have sales reps and etc. In this extremely fragmented market where you know probably like a sales cycle is six to eight months, the average deal is like twenty five to fifty thousand dollars, and then you have to like physically travel and present etc. etc. And just the unit economics of that just doesn't work and. I completely agree with you that this question of distribution of the data and moving it from B2B sales to B2B SaaS model and then almost B2C is extremely important for any company on that, on that matter. And, uh, that's number one. Number two, you t- touched upon something, um, really also that I see when I'm trying to play with the data. It's like, this barrier that they have to overcome between, okay, I'm, I'm working on something for a threshold industry. And then we have like our internal ecosystem there. It's like AWS and, and other, like other products. And then there's satellite data. And I have like, there's a really high barrier for my team to like integrate that data into existing software solutions. And that's where developers tools, as you, as you said, that sort of help you just build this in as a plugin or the SDK. Sort of like, I, I really respect what Skywatch does in that matter in Canada. I think they are trying to tackle that problem. That's also really, really, um, really important topic. And then the fusion, you know, you, you mentioned the, and, and I really believe that the fusion, as I, as I mentioned in the last video, the fusion between different sets of data is important, but I think in a broader way, what, for example, Black Sky is doing, right? They're trying to blend the, uh, satellite data with like social media monitoring or other sources of media or other sources of like terrestrial intelligence. And that's like a broader vision of fusion, right? So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. That's, that's really important. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, for sure. Uh, and, uh, I think coming to like where the sector is, uh, as, you, as you said, it's like very B2B at the moment. And you mentioned that the sales cycles are very long. And in some cases, the contract values are very small. Um, you know, the contract values range from $10,000 per month, $25,000 per month, to even millions a month, depending on which customers you're going after. Of course, the larger contract value go after the lesser the customers who are like willing to pay at that uh, price bracket become. But uh, like right now, uh, there's companies that have strong business models where j- by just selling the data or the analytics, they can sort of get what they want. Uh, but it's not enough for the industry to itself grow. Um, because as you said, there needs to be, it needs to be as easy for any company uh, or a non-technical person even to be able to take some sort of a satellite image and use it for their analysis. Uh, it needs to be, as I said, like a, an auto ML thing where if he's trying to uh, analyze something for his industry, he just needs to drag and drop a model, which has not been the case till now. And as I said, Skywatch is doing something really good in, in that sector, trying to, you know, uh, uh, tackle two issues there, making it easy for developers to use this as well as getting different data uh, sources in the same platform so that uh, it can be worked together. Um, so there's, there's definitely a lot of potential there uh, and it just need it doesn't have to stop at just satellite data as well. Uh, as you said, Black Sky is working with other types of data. Uh, there's so many different data sources that can be plugged in, be it weather data, be it IoT ground data, uh, be it financial data uh, or as well as social media data. Uh, uh, the combination of these different data sources is something that uh, 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 will come across and um, like this is what I think would be the end goal or what we would try to do here at Pixel is uh, there needs to be something like a palantir for physical data. What palantir does is you put multiple different databases and uh, it get, gives you insights that possibly a human mind could not get. Similarly, here you you, are, you should be able to put in pull in satellite data, you should be able to pull in any other data. And uh, you don't need to know what's actually going on there. It's a black box, but at least gives you insights that you would not have been able to uh, get without combining that data. Uh, and if you're able to get to that level, it can truly become uh, something from B2B to B2B SaaS to uh, even B2C, uh, where anyone would be able to pull anything up, put, put any data set and get insights. Right. Yeah, that's a great insight. The Palantir, by the way, is going to IPO, I guess, very soon. They're filing their paperwork now. Great. Um, all right. Thank you so much. This is all I have for you today. And um, so where people can follow you and follow the history of your company. 
um so i think we are uh, we are on twitter at pixel space uh, we are on insta as well as facebook uh, if you search pixel space you should be able to get us uh, and uh, uh, we were supposed to actually launch this month or next but due to covid it's been delayed to november so uh, few good updates coming up in the next few months as we gear up for our launch in november as well uh, and uh, yeah uh, just trying to you know uh, fill the gaps that are in the earth observation industry uh, ourselves and uh, making it as widespread to use by as many as many people as possible uh, uh, thanks for having me and yeah looking forward to catch up with you closer to the launch date yeah <laughs> of course uh, yeah fingers crossed